Welcome to Talking Point, a podcast brought to you by Jordan Cullen. Here you'll find everyday conversations about everything and nothing in particular. In this episode, we talk to Luke Sartor, portrait boudoir, editorial and travel photographer based in Mackay. I have to keep a PC. I'll be I'll beep us out. That's fine. Or I don't have to. I don't know what the rules are because it's like on a cast where the podcast is, it mm. says, does this contain explicit language? And I can say yes. Ah, so you put well podcasts you can probably get away with then. Mm. But YouTube, I know, are very are, PC. Are, are they? They don't like swearing. No, like especially if you want to monetize, I know it's a definite no. Oh, no. uh, true. But if you don't want to monetize, exactly. Let's just go to town. I'm not gonna monetize Austra- for ages because we're Australian. Like, exactly. it's, 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 we're Funny meant yet. to swear. Yeah. Um, so I have to say thank you for helping me set this up because it's a lot better than what I would have done on my own. And um, <laughs> so you deserve like most of the credit, to be honest. No, 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 no. So, um, yeah. Anyway. It's, it's kind of it, it, anything that I end up doing, it just goes next level. Like it's pretty unnecessary, but I'm like, uh, no, nah. let's what? just go. If we're going to do something, overdo yeah. it, you know. So what can you think of that sort of fits that bill in terms of projects recently? Like what have you been up to? Um, well, one I'm definitely working on at the moment is I'm going to hold a gallery like after all this COVID, COVID stuff is over. Um, I want to have a gallery with two editorials that I've shot recently and then I'm still thinking about what I want the third one to be. Yeah. But yeah, once it's all over, gallery and as far as going overboard, I kind of was going to make, oh, maybe I should just test the waters first and yeah. just have a smaller one. A couple of images just made with 20 to 25 people. Then I'm like, I want to go do that. Let's yeah. just go next level. Yeah. So um, I'm, quite, I'm thinking maybe Paxton's. And for like those that don't know nice. what that is, it's more like a big warehouse kind of thing where you yeah. have a wedding. But it's like the really industrial look of it, polished yep. concrete, all that kind of stuff. Yep. And... Um, have my and the other thing is too that as far as going overboard is I don't like doing small prints. I yeah, like things yeah, yeah. massive. Yeah. So I need that space anyway. Yep. So I want to put that in there, and yeah, those two editorials are going to be printed really big, as well as I don't know how I'm going to present the, the third one, but I'm also going to have some landscapes there. Yeah. And I like printing on glass because it's like you can pretty much step into the image. Yeah. It yeah. feels like you're there. Yeah. And so I want to print on, on glass and then to do that, you want it big. So I'm talking mm. like 1500 by a meter, kind nice, of big, yeah. um, which I've done for a friend and they just look freaking sick. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, that's kind of just going next level. Nice. So I guess rewinding a bit, how did you get started in all this? Like what did you start with and why? <laughs> I actually never got photography. Mm. I, I thought it was dumb. And then my brother was into it and he's just yeah. like a ninja, like he's really good. And I went to Europe in 2017, I think it was. Mm-hmm. Um, it was just like an open-ended trip, like open it, buy a ticket, fly over and yep. see when I come back. I was like, well, I'm going to go to all these awesome places. I need to take some photos. Mm-hmm. But then also being a little Jew, I didn't want to buy a camera. So I was like, all right, I'll actually try with my <laughs> iPhone. You've got the nose for it. But yeah, see? <laughs> Sorry, YouTube, yeah. no, that's a wog nose wog and jew very different um but yeah like actually try yeah and see how i go and like it was on my first area which was italy that i um started doing it and i was like oh yeah. i get it now and like some of those images i still like i wish i could they weren't on an iphone you know because yeah. like, I, I really like them so then i would come back and bought a canon 70d and yeah nice. now we're here cool which is yeah. And obviously 70D is a good place to start. I think I started with a 550 and went to a 60, but, um, you know, they say the best camera is the one that you have with you and, you know, it's more about the composition than, mm. than the gear. What do you think on that? Yes and also no. So, like, that's why, like, there's ones in Europe I talk, I actually really froth those photos. Like, they're actually really nice mm. um, and that's just with an iPhone. Yeah. But then the no part is... I can't sell them. I can't blow them up. So like having a high quality camera and then it's also in as far as 
the getting started 100% is the camera you have on you is the one you want. Mm-hmm. But then if you want to be taken seriously for your work or charge more especially mm. or get higher end clients, mm. um, you want to have the gear to reflect that because you can offer a better product yeah, as well. Yeah. Like you can print massive yeah. or like it's just so crispy, or, you know. Yeah. So like I definitely there's two ends of the spectrum and it just depends where you are in your journey as yeah. what you need. Yeah. But mm. right, In terms of people looking to get into photography, maybe they're listening to this podcast because they are interested but they don't know where to start. What would you say to them? Just take photos of everything. Yeah. Like when I, when I started, I just because I, I didn't know what I wanted to shoot. Like yeah. I like landscapes and that kind of thing. But where I was living at the time, which was in Brisbane, and then coming back to Mackay, like I'm not a massive one for rainforest. Like as mm. in taking photos of that kind of thing. So I would take photos. And I, I like what else is there? Mm. So I started taking photos of that. Taking photo of my friends. Taking photo of my brother. And then that kind of led me down the road of like where we are now, which is portraiture, and. Um, yeah, like, what was the question again? What would you say to people that... Uh... Oh, yeah, just get, shoot everything and then mm. from there you'll find out what you like shooting. So like, you mm. might really froth food so you just get directed more to shooting yep. food or then you really like people, start shooting yeah. that and then see you go from there. Nice. But like the first 10,000, they reckon like the first 10,000 photos you take are... Your shit is, yeah. and I 100 percent agree with that. Yeah. My first ten thousand yeah. are rubbish, and it's only sort of like the last yeah. six months to eight months where I've been really yeah. frothing my work. Like yeah. you can always get better, but you should you should still like what you produce. Yeah, you know? like so. I, I remember I started on a, a Canon power shot. Um, shout out to Andrew Mortimer, who was my lecturer at uni, and I used to shoot stuff in sixteen by nine because I thought it was sick. Uh, yeah. And he was like, "Dude, what the f- are you doing?" I'm like. What? Just do go four cin- by three or something. Cinematic, like. cinematic. <laughs> Sixteen by nine, man. It's cinema. Yeah, yeah. And I just thought I was onto something. Like I was, I was like, <laughs> I was. I, I just thought I was amazing. And uh, yeah, so I've I've improved from there. But I think that's it. You have to start somewhere, hey? and and you have these funny stories of like doing stupid shit like oh. that, and it gets goes from there. So. Um, but yeah, tell me about your Patreon. Like I know you've launched that recently. What's the deal with it? Um, so. That's just like uh, the people wanting to see my work because uh, I obviously shoot a lot of nude yep. um, and just wanted to see my stuff uncensored basically because, yep. again, Instagram and Facebook especially is just PC. Mm. You, can't, like, you show a little bit of skin and they yep. Um, yep. ban you and, and all that kind of thing. So I just want to be able to allow that and also just like getting uh, – I put all this effort into to producing content and that mm. and I just get a little monetary reward kind of thing yeah, I mean, nice. if, you, if you want to see it and if you don't, that's okay. Yep. Um, and then I think maybe in the future it might branch off to being able to put video as well, like full yeah, cool. behind the scenes because I know I do want to put behind the scenes stuff on yep. YouTube for people just to see what happens. Yeah, yeah. But then just go <clears> like <throat> full. Like, you can see everything, you know, from where to yep. go and that there might be nude like completely nude and that kind of thing. Yeah, and for like, sure, yeah. I think it will be good too as far as a lot of people like nowadays anyway so like is not comfortable with yeah. nudity or like it's just human body. Yeah. And, and like if you see and it that, in that sexual way, yeah. it is. But then it's also like the original art form yeah. was humans. Yeah. You know, like look at the sculptures of women and men yeah. know, and paintings. Yeah. So I don't, yeah, that's what I try and produce. I think what's different about the way you do it is it's still tasteful. Like there's obviously a style of, um, I guess, there's things like pornography or whatever and that's like totally different and and whereas in photography, I guess, when you're taking photos, um, in that sense, it's all about the form and and the shape and everything Mm -hmm. um, and lighting and textures and and all the rest of it. Um, So... Yeah, do you think that's what's misunderstood about it is that it is? Oh, 100%. Yeah. Well, I, I know and that's another reason I want to do the behind the scenes things because I know a lot of people think it's just a mad orgy. Like, yeah, yeah that's all that boudoir yeah. is and like, and, and a lot of the stuff <clears> do where it couldn't be further from the truth. Mm. It's literally just your <laughs> around for an hour and a half and just yeah. like literally just laughing. And I think that's like what makes it genuine and not pornography is it's yeah. just hanging out, having yeah. fun, making art and um, yeah, like it. It's mm. very creative, isn't it? That's mm. the thing I think. Definitely. It's not about like, you know, being in these vulnerable poses or, or whatever. Like sure there might be vulnerabilities to it, but there's a lot more to the um you know, to making the image, I guess, than than oh, what people might think. Yeah, for sure. And mm. and 
the are you saying like the the body in that like especially with women like curves and shape is like yeah. that's what it, it's about curves and that's what mm. makes them interesting you know yeah. like and i really like um like bat lit bat back lit yeah and like silhouette kind of stuff yeah because yeah. it, it is literally just about the shape yeah exactly and yeah. i think i think too like i know like predominantly i shoot women and then like obviously for my boudoir um products it, it is mostly women mm. um but like that backlit it gives the mind needs to fill in the rest yeah, with yeah. their own story yeah. you know and what, what makes that really attractive yeah um to women liking those kind of images and yeah. man, like I, I like that kind of stuff it's like sexy cool. without being explicit yeah for sure yeah because um, I know I have done stuff where it's been like completely nude or almost completely nude, but you can't see anything, but your mind yeah fills in the rest, you know, yeah. like with whatever you want to see or how you it makes you feel. Yeah, you know? yeah. So yeah, for sure. I think that's the mark of good photography is an image that makes the viewer feel something. Like that's what I try to do personally, and I know that, like we've talked about, that is like seeing a photo, and sometimes you see something and you just think, wow, like, and it really hits you. And I think that's the mark of a good photo when mm. when it has that sort of effect. Well, that's what I'm hoping with this with this gallery and the mag the gallery and the magazine are going to be um, pretty. I saw. Did I say I was working on a magazine? That's one of the other things I'm working oh, on. Oh no, well. you didn't. So, but yes, yeah, I'm working yep. on a magazine, and that's kind of going to complement the gallery because two of the editorials are going to be in the gallery. Yeah. Um, and then uh, the wording that's going to go with the magazine yep. will also complement the gallery. Yeah, yeah, and, I'm with you. Um, yep. The people that I have shown it to, like the women, uh, the girls that I have shown it to. They've all really identified with like the kind of wording that's nice. with it, yeah, um, and have got like a really emotional response, yeah, and like in, in a positive and not not so much a negative way, but it brings up a lot of like past history, like they might yeah, have, yeah, for it, sure, and yeah. that kind of thing, and like you is know, it like talking about, on self esteem and those kind of topics? Some of or? it is self esteem, some yep. of it's relationship, yeah, um, self perception, um, yep. and uh, yeah, and like. It, it, it kind of sounds like kind of messed up, but then I'm there like, yes, yeah, emotional reaction. Yeah, no, but it's. God, did she say to shed a tear? Oh, I, don't, you know, I don't mean that. But like it's a authentic. Really yeah. Kind of way. I mean, yeah, yeah. Like, good. I'm hitting yeah, you know, yeah. The, the emotional yeah. The emotional side. So I'm like, yeah, oh, good. Yeah. I'm on the right track. Like, yeah. And when you get those, like for me, that's, and it's there's real, no bigger it's not compliment. fake, is it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. There's no bit bigger compliment to me anyway. Yeah. Than someone genuinely having an emotional reaction to something I've done. Yeah, true. Like, yeah. Yeah, this is sick. Or, nice. or I know I'm on the right path and like by yeah. helping people or or having making people get some sort of value yeah. about what I make, you know? So, yeah. Nice. So what are your thoughts on like the next few years, I guess, like in terms of photography for you? Is it more of a business in your head or is it a hobby at the moment or or what do you want to do with with it? It's like so I started as a hobby. Yep. Then it moved to just like a side thing yep. that I get paid for. And then it's actually really interesting. I'm reading a book at the moment that a friend gave me about becoming, it's called uh, like how to become a key person of influence or something like that. Mm -hmm. Pardon me, excuse me. And um, it's about improving yourself and becoming a key person of influence yep. in your field and being like one of the highest paid people in your field. Yep. And one of the things it talks about is if you have a side hustle that you want to make your career or mm. your main your main job is don't call, it's not a side hustle yeah you don't think of it like that because yeah. then it will always be that yeah, yeah. So now it's my job yeah my other like i have obviously have my full-time job and then yeah. my part-time job but it, i still now in my head when i yeah. talk to people about it it is my job yeah and that's how to, to make it into and yeah. where i want to be is yeah. doing it full-time i um, think um i guess my observation of photography as a business is that there's uh, guys around and girls around that are so talented and you're know, like they mm -hmm. do really good stuff and it's trying to get into the right market and get the clients that's the challenge you know it's it's mm -hmm. not saying that you know these guys aren't aren't good enough because there's heaps of talented guys out there but it's just getting the, it, it, the audience it, it, I guess. It breaks me when I when I see people that are so much better than me not charging for their work like just yeah. I also think you should work for free Okay. But like if you're if you should definitely do stuff for free like yep. i still do stuff for free okay um and then like i still have like get paid really well for for my pay stuff but yeah uh, i think especially when you're starting out definitely shoot for free yeah and then do other things that um because i know i've got a lot of business by working for free with for someone you know yeah for sure yeah and i did the same thing with yeah, andrew i shot weddings with him and things so mm. i'm with you on that mm. and I, i'm sure we'll get some heat for that comment because a lot of people <laughs> say oh you know it's guys like you that are undercutting the market no and but stuff. see then but there's the other side of the thing as well it's like you should do stuff for free 
but then also 100% charge for your work. Yeah. And charge what you think you're worth. Like I know when I decided to charge more, mm. I one, got more bookings. Yep. And two, I had to work less. Mm. Uh, Which is great, isn't yeah, it? You know, like the one I noticed I got more bookings, two, I got, you know, instead of doing three clients to earn $1,000, mm. you only have to do one client to exactly. earn $1,000. Yeah. And if you're producing something that, because like it comes along with, but make sure you're producing something of value. Yeah, of for course. People, yeah. Um, which will also, yeah, you know, you won't get the people that just want to. So in in my um, for my business, hmm. it's I won't just get people that just want to pick me up. Yeah, or yeah. that kind of sort of don't deserve it. Like it's just you yeah. know, like I make me feel good. Yeah. Um, actually, can I talk about my client I just had recently? Yeah, sure. So, if anyone watching, go on my Instagram, Luke Yep. Yeah. And have a look at Tennille. Yep. So, yeah, like we we're talking just before. Yeah, yeah. My last, my other thing for the last eleven years has been health and fitness. So I'm massively yeah, yeah, into yeah. that. And this girl took herself out of a toxic relationship. Yeah. And did it the hard way. Yep. The the good way. Changed the lifestyle. Changed the eating. Changed the mindset. Awesome. Yep. And lost forty kilos. Wow. I was like. <laughs> Oh my god! Yeah, that is so much weight. Yeah, it and, sounds like she used her experience to fuel her motivation. Oh, and I yeah, and I asked yeah. her I'm like, so what? Did she get what was it hard? And she's like, F I know if it was hard. I'm yeah. Like, yeah, good. But was it worth it? She's like, hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. And she looks amazing. Like she looks insane. Like yeah. so good. Yeah. And when we were shooting, you could see she was kind of like. So we, one of the um, uh, the kind of shoots. Uh, sorry, not shoots. Looks that I do. Hmm. Is like his shirt kind of thing, you know, white shirt, yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of thing. yeah. And you can see she's just trying to hide a lot of things. I'm like, stop hiding it. Let me take some photos, yeah, and I'll show you, yeah. And then you'll just be feeling yourself, yeah. I took some photos, showed her, and she, ah, is that me? Yeah, you yeah. know, like, yeah, and, yeah. And look, and then after that, just loved herself. The yeah, awesome. Yeah, and so she should like. It's, that's awesome for yeah. anyone, men, male, female. Yeah. It's making the the change, yeah, and then putting in the work, so you get. For me, get clients like that that really value your product instead yeah, yeah. of the ones that are just sort of, you know, shit kicking. And I think that's mm. where your point was on working for free. Like obviously you're working for free on areas that you haven't really become professional in or that mm. you're looking to go into, mm. but you're charging for stuff that you're quite good at and that you've got sort of professional standards 100%. in. Um, but, yeah, I think in terms of self-esteem, like you were talking with Tennille, it's awesome in portraiture that it can have that power on people because people feel tight and anxious and, mm. and locked up about it. And then once they see that they can look good on camera, it really um, does some wonders, I think. So mm. I've, I've, good. I think every one of my clients, when they get their final images, I, I don't think I've had anyone else yet that hasn't said, that's me. Yeah. But I can't believe it's me. Yeah. Because it, like, it, it looks, you know, it, they do, they look amazing. Yeah. Yeah. And, it looks like them, but just because that's what I try and capture is just the best versions yeah. of themselves. You know, I don't, yeah. I don't, I don't do the kind of retouching where you know you're making things smaller or yeah, yeah, yeah. moving stuff. I just, um, especially with cameras these days, you can see so high resolution. Like me looking at you, I can't mm. see every pore in your skin. Yeah, yeah. But in a still, yeah, luckily, it's like, yeah. I can see the soul, man. Yeah, you know, yeah, like, yeah. It's yeah. like intense. Yeah. So I just make it look as like as normal as possible. Yeah, yeah. Um, and just the best version of themselves. And yeah, mm. everyone's just like, I just can't believe. Yeah, that that's me, and that it's a uh, accurate representation of yep. themselves too. Like I try not to put people in positions. Like I'm yep. a very much a, I'll help direct you, but I'm not going to sit there directing you the whole time. Yeah, for something sure. I might do for you. Yeah. It's not how you move or sit and it mm. looks awkward and weird. Yeah. It just doesn't work. And like, if people feel awkward, it's hard to sort of convince them that it's fine, mm. you know? Yeah. It's like, no, no, you look really good. And then, you know, their, their, their face tenses up. You see their body yeah, like yeah. sort of cowling over or like, especially with women, they they do a lot of like covering yep. their midsection or like if you want them to put their hands on the neck or like around their face, they'll yep. have their wrists closed. Like, and that's a very yep. like, Standoffish. Um, yeah, exactly. Yep. Where if you want open, um, yeah, kind, yep. of, kind of like so, leads you in sort of thing. Yeah. Yep. So if, like people that can't see, like you can see wrists and, yep. and that kind of thing. And that looks really elegant and, yep. and like, yeah, open rather yep. than closed and, and yep. that kind of thing. Yeah. And then like for edit, but then you can use that for if you want to get that effect as well. So mm. like for one of those editorials that I've done called um, Intimacy and Distance, sorry, Distance, oh. distance and Intimacy, 
um, there was a lot of that yep. of like clothes offness with this what I wanted yep, to the style tell, of, you know. Yeah, yeah. the story. Mm. Um, in terms of tech, like are you excited about the future in terms of technology and, and camera gear and things or do you think it's just going to be more of the same and pushing boundaries of, you know, light performance or, or whatever it is? Photo-wise, we've done it. We're mm. already at awesomeness. Yeah, yeah. Video, oh, when you can have basically yeah. a cinema camera in a mirrorless body, yep. which is so... We'll see what happens, but the new Canon R5. R5, yeah, I'm keen for it too. And just the some of the specs that it's brewing, like even though like, so 8K oh. is just, it's, it's out of control Stupid. and unnecessary, but yeah. the point is though that it's in a mirrorless body. Yeah, like that's, that's the impressive that's part. The, in, insane, like that was reserved for cinema cameras. Yeah. And now it's in that, so like, and it, which is 100% what's gonna happen. And imagine cropping in that much and having a full HD image oh, still, or a, or a 4K image. You know, that's full, exactly like <laughs> shoot everything and then pick like pick your framing up. Yeah, yeah. like that would be sick. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. The, the video side uh, of things is what I'm excited for. Yeah, and yeah. like whatever Sony pioneered it, now Canon quite possibly is gonna perfect it kind of thing. Yeah, um, unless what and Sony brings out their A7S three in 2050. Yeah, it's just taking so 20, long. 20, 50, 20, I mean, 20, that's 50, really in the future. Yeah, it isn't is. That's what it feels like. It, it's just if they ever do, but um, yeah, that's what I'm freaking mm -hmm. really excited for. And then just also like, there's no better time in yep. history to be in better in be into photography. Yeah, because everything's just really is so cheap. Yeah. Can I just say I don't know how deep you want to go in this, but do you feel as though in the last ten years you've really changed the, as a person? You know, obviously people don't know your background if they don't know you. But coming from, you know what I mean? You know what I'm saying oh, here? Changes yeah, yeah. Oh, man. Uh, ask Luke 10 years ago if he would be into photography, taking pictures of girls and having a top knot. You'd yeah. say Luke's a little wuss, little pussy. Yeah. <laughs> um, even like five years ago when I was in the army, I would never have thought this is what I'd be doing. Yeah. I never thought I'd be getting out of the army, to be honest. Yeah. I, I was going to be in there for life. But yeah, no way I thought that. Yeah. This would be my future. Or like, especially last year was really when I was like, I can make this my reality. Is when mm. I did that photo mm. adventure to Bali. Yeah. Um. Do you know about that? Oh, anyway, I took a bunch. Yeah. Of, I took a bunch of girls over to Bali. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. and we just went on an awesome holiday, and yeah. in there was included photo, mm. um, photo sessions, and it was just nice. unreal. And the fact that I could get paid to travel and mm. do something I love, I was like, okay. Yeah. Let's go. This it's is the shit. That's an eye opener, that. isn't it? Yeah. Like when all the stars align and you're like, Jesus, I thought like YouTubers with a million subscribers only did this you mm. know, and you're doing it. Oh, I didn't even have, I didn't even have over a thousand yep. Instagram peoples and we got people to pay. Uh, what would we charge? It was, it was an unreal value anyway. It was still, it was mm. 2K for 11, 11 nights in yep. two luxury villas and I'm talking yeah the one in good. the one in ubud oh my god i would want that as my house yeah um two luxury villas three activities yeah and three photo shoots nice um with my business partner at the time who was a professional makeup artist yeah and um, so you get your makeup done all the time and like one of the nice. girls even paid her to do a makeup every day we were over there like it was nice. next level yeah and then just have this great <laughs> adventure mm. like and yeah for that to be real yeah at such a small fish I'm like, yeah imagine if i can get to like a medium-sized fish yeah exactly and how awesome that would be and like a big fish i know? guess you just got to pump out the content and yeah and grow the audience somehow and well that's you yeah. know i don't have the secrets but i'm trying yeah <laughs> i don't even reckon yeah. like it 100 social media and the internet is the way of the future mm. but don't think that's it yeah, yeah there'll be something else like it. don't 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 think that oh, i need a big following to mm. you know i still only have 1500 and mm. one of my packages is over is two grand. Yeah, yeah. You know, and yeah. I've had people pay that. That's why I was really proud. If, if you, especially if you do produce good work. Yep. Like yeah, hundred percent. Yep. Um, and that's the thing. Like I think when I started, I charged like fifty dollars for a shoot or something. Yeah, like well, nothing. Your you know? story, yeah, for sure. Um, but yeah, and and that's it. You have to start, I guess, somewhere and get somewhat of a name for yourself and go from there. Mm. But um, but even if even when you're small, like. 50 bucks, I still think you should charge something, mm. you know, like do stuff for free, but then, yeah. you know, I'm not saying do lots of stuff forever for free, mm. charge something because yeah, yeah. then people will yep. expect stuff. Yep. 
or, or just lose the, um, you know, oh, it's just a photo. You just take it and say, well, if you can do it, do it on your iPhone. Yeah. You know, like, which is on a whole nother subject of like cameras on your phone these days are just insane. Yeah, yeah. But they don't have your creative eye. Like, for, yeah. like you know, it's true. You can probably put your camera on, my camera on auto and take a great photo. Yeah. But what you're paying for is our artistic Exactly, yeah. You know, what we see when we look at something, yep. you know. Because I guess if clients knew, for example, if you're at a like restaurant taking food photos, if they knew the angles and the light that mm. they needed, they wouldn't hire us. They'd just do it. Exactly. If they had a decent camera, you know. Mm -hmm. if, they, if they didn't yeah. have the, 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 they didn't know the angles, but then also you have the lighting, you mm. have all the kit, which isn't cheap, as yeah. you know. We say is, as you have a blanket behind you. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> or like you, you can like, do it on the cheap. Yeah, this episode sponsored by eBay and a, and a dodgy blanket. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> That's sure. right. eBay and yeah. my old like blanket I had on my bed. Yeah. Um, yeah it's, quite, it's, it's very clean though. You know, it's, it's good. Well, that's the, oh, you know, quick story about that blanket. Oh, here we go. That side might be clean. Okay. But the other side, um, when I used to live in towns with my mate and we had a dog together. Yeah. Um, I used to have the panthen to put on my lips yeah, before yeah. I go to yep. sleep. And then my dog decided to come inside and just eat it <laughs> on my bed. And it went all over it and it didn't come out. Like, and like people would come, I'm like, oh, it's, my dog did it, I swear, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, it's a hard, so I got a new one. <laughs> hard story, yeah. yeah. Good idea. But yeah, so that's Luke's blanket. Um, there you go. Um, we talked about your Patreon earlier, but we didn't tell people how to find it. At the moment, link in my bio on Instagram. Too easy. And yeah. your Instagram handle is? Luke, so L-U-K-E, full stop, Sartor, S-A-R-T-O-R. Sweet. And then my website is just my name. Nice. Com. Yeah. So I know we both um, follow similar people on YouTube, I guess, in terms of Peter McKinnon and, and others, but who, our Lord, who our do you Lord, look... Our Lord, Peter McKinnon. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Amen. Um, <laughs> who do you look up to, you know, in terms of that stuff? Do you look up to content creators that are smashing video as well and pumping stuff out or the more like low-key ones with smaller followings or street photographers or who would you say it is? It's kind of three that I really, really like, which are Peter McKinnon, which was pretty much how I learned. Yep. Actually, no, four. Peter McKinnon, I pretty much learned photography from. Yeah. And I just, he's really entertaining, like amazing. And he's just what everyone aspires to be as far as, oh, not everyone, but you know, like yeah, YouTube yeah. and big famous in that kind of like the more modern space. Yep. Then there's one called Negative Feedback, which is this, this British dude who only shoots film and it is, his videos are, he's kind of awkward. Yep. But it's just so chill. Yeah. And, you know, film is just a whole nother kettle of fish yeah, yeah. and just watching his process and like what the projects he does. And he does a lot of that interview kind of stuff as well. Like it's with other artists and, and creators yeah. And, and yeah, so I really like that. Um, another one is Sam Elkins, who's okay. a massive um, on Instagram um, and his images are just gold. Yeah. Well, I can take beautiful images like his. Yep. Um, he's a lifestyle yep. photographer and he shoots for big brands like Audi yep. um, and all that. I have to check him out. I'm not following oh, him at the moment. Oh, he is legit, man. Yeah. yeah. Follow him. And he and he's only just sort of started YouTube in the last year, I think, or whatever, mm -hmm. like actually trying to smash it. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then that last one is a guy that I actually got to meet in Bali, which was awesome, um, called uh, Sasa, Michael Sasa. That's right, yeah. And I learned so, pretty much all business from him. Yeah. Like the business side of photography and yeah. business side of boudoir from him. And mm -hmm. he done a... a Series called uh, it's like meet a photographer or the artist series or something where he would interview other boudoir photographers. Oh, and just, cool! Yeah. And what I liked about that so much was they actually talked numbers. Like it wasn't just yeah, like true, yeah. you know charge. What do you think? And I was like, no, nah, I charge this much. I earned four hundred k this year doing this many hours doing this kind of work. Yeah, yeah. This is what I do. And and is he based in Bali? Is he? No. So he's you based in America in okay, LA. Yeah, yeah. But he was in Bali at the same time as me. I'm like, oh, I'm just gonna hit this dude up and see if I can meet him. Yeah. And we met up and chat like, and talked and just yeah. yeah. Just to meet someone from the internet that I looked up to yeah, it's great. Yeah. was awesome. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, so like shout out to Mike Sasser if you're watching yeah. this, you know. Nice. Who knows? Um or listening. Like we still do, like we every now and then we'll talk on Instagram yeah. um and like like each other's stuff and like what and whatever. Yeah, sweet. Yeah. But like yeah, like that was sick. Yeah. 
It's I think it's um interesting because people don't take photography seriously as a business, but like any business, there are serious elements involved, you know, like oh. um you know, all the numbers, for example, budgeting, equipment, advertising, all of it. Um, and although we might work from home, a lot of us and we don't have uh, studios that we need to pay for or whatever some of us do, there's still a lot involved, I think. So, uh, well, what's, what about ask you? Like, who do you, you say photography is not a business, but every every business mm. uses photos? Exactly. Yeah. So, like, depends who you ask. You know, like yeah. if you're asking maybe a diesel fitter is photography serious? No, because they see no value in it. Yeah. Yeah. But if you ask Coca Cola, yeah, um, I think you know it's They'll pretty know. Ser- yeah, pretty serious. Or like any brand ever, yeah. like you're not going to know about it unless someone takes a photo or video of exactly, it. Exactly. Yeah. So it's just yeah, maybe I think the miss or why people don't think it's a business is because mm. not every person is a do it as a business. Mm. Yeah. You know, it's always yeah. just oh, it's his side hustle or whatever. Yeah. Or or he's only charging or she's only charging mm. this much. Yeah. Um. And I think that's what I'd say to people, like if they do want to go more professional is charge more. You get yeah, taken sure. way more seriously. Yeah. It also holds you accountable too. Like mm. no one's going to hire you if you shit. Yeah. And it's like, all right, someone just paid me a grand to do this. I'm going to yeah. perform. Yeah, well, yeah. That's just me anyway. Some people yeah, don't yeah. care. Some people don't yeah. give a but like, I want to give people the best yeah. thing ever. Yeah. You know? You're putting 110% in then, I guess. Mm. Um, yeah, I think that's... Ah, it's, I don't know, for me, I, I, I did a similar thing. I learned off Matt Granger and he's more like education based, mm. um, but he does have really good resources in terms of um, photography as a business. Oh. Um, and I met him down in Sydney for a, a photo walk that I did in like, I don't know when it was, 2012 or something. Um, but it's interesting, yeah, like you say, meeting these guys in person and seeing how they operate. And, and I think it's important just to have mentors, even if it's, Oh. If you don't know them personally and just people that you can look up to and they say, you know, if you surround yourself with successful people, you'll become successful. And I think there's a lot of truth to that as well. hundred the You can have a mentor that's not real. Uh, sorry, not physical. Yeah, yeah. I would definitely say my mentor is a YouTuber. Yeah, like yeah. Like 100%. And also that, you know, definitely in real life, hmm. your immediate five people you hang around, you're going to be like them. I actually did a post about that the other day. I was like... um if you hang around with losers, mm. you're going to be a loser. That's yeah, yeah. I mean, like that might be a bit hard for some people to yeah. swallow because they could be looking at themselves and going, "That's me." Yeah, yeah. But it's the truth. Yeah. And you can make the choice to like, yeah, like it might suck. Like it doesn't mean people are bad, mm. but people just might not make good choices to progress themselves in life. Or yeah, like they're yeah. going to be in the same place in ten years. Mm. If you don't want to be that guy or yeah. that girl, make different choices. Hang around with different people. That's why I try and keep my circle. You know, like mm. us hanging out. Yeah. My immediate circle. I try and hang out with people yep. that are just trying to do stuff. Yeah, yeah. And do you think it's about just having something that you're passionate about because that gives you the motivation to work hard to succeed in those goals? Definitely creatively and stuff like that. Mm. Okay, like, yeah, yeah. It doesn't and it doesn't necessarily need to be um, like creative or mm. what you want to do with your um, mm. professional career. Like yeah, one, yeah. My, one of my best mates. He's a diesel fitter and is a uh, so like he, he has his own business, but as for, like, I, we get a lot of value out of each other talking business and just just mm. hearing what he does. And yep, yep. But also his passion and my passion as well is snowboarding. Oh nice! So yeah. like we've been to Japan three times together, mm. and uh, we were meant to go on to Norway this year before Corona, yep. Corona, and, and all that kind of stuff, just smashing our plans. Yeah. Anyway. But like, yeah, definitely passion, hundred percent. Whether the, and that, you know, it's just something to work towards. You yeah, know? exactly. Yeah, yeah. So, oh god. So I guess another thing. Um, this is a bit of a self indulgent question because I've been thinking this no good. for Indulge, ages. Indulge thyself. Um, since moving to Mackay two years ago from the Sunshine Coast, mm. I've really struggled with. I guess creativity in a way, this sounds like I'm a wanker, but anyway. No, um, but because I haven't known the area and I haven't really known anyone and I've been like, what the hell do I photograph? And like, what am I even doing? Like, where do, I, where do I go? And mm-hmm. yeah, uh, what, what would you say to people that aren't in, you know, uh, touristy places or they're, they're based, you know, out of the metropolis or whatever? Like, what should they do to, to find some inspiration? Like exactly what you're doing right now. Hmm. Make something happen. Yeah. Do, if you, you know, because hundred percent, that's definitely a small town mindset of, oh, it's just a shit small town. Yeah, yeah. Nothing happens here. So yeah, nothing happens if you don't make it happen. Yeah, yeah. Like 
setting up a podcast. Yeah. That's sick. Yeah, you know, like, and you made that, you know, yeah. made that happen. And then I was interested. Your last guest was interested. And I'm sure other people are going to be like, "Oh, yeah, I'll come and talk smack for 30 minutes." <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, for sure. Yeah. And then that was something that I, when I, when I started getting into photography, I was like, "I'm a Kai. I hate everything. Like, as in, not, I don't hate everything, but like, mm. I don't want to photograph that stuff." Yeah, yeah. And so I could have, I could have whined and been like, "Oh, I can only do it when I travel because I yeah. love taking landscapes," or find something else mm. and then it turns out i love what i found which is portraiture yeah you know and then to take it further it's like okay sick i like taking photos of people but then what do I, what else do i really want to take photos of women yeah so just make it happen make the connections you know yeah and yep. uh like ask 100 people and this goes for anything but mm. like i just asked so many people and a lot of them said no yeah but you only need one to say yes yeah and don't worry i've been in the same boat with this too mm. <clears throat> Pardon. Um, yeah, you know, you, you put the line out and some of them are a bit mm. um, optimistic or whatever. Um, Scott Morrison, if you're watching. <laughs> um, Jacinda Arden, if you're watching. Uh, uh, yep, <clears throat> ScoMo, episode three. Uh, but yeah, you know what I mean? Like you can have these grand ideas of interviewing these people and, and sometimes they're not on board, which is cool and that's fine. But I think the more you throw the line out there, obviously the more hits you'll get. Oh. 100%. Uh, so you just have to accept the the rejection or the no reply mm. in that case. Like if you, Thanks, Scott. I, I can't and, think. Uh, of, I can't think of the right um, metaphor. But yeah. like, yeah, if you only throw one thing out, you have only got one chance. Yeah. If you throw a hundred. You have a hundred chances. Yeah. And like, because you, you might only get one back, and okay, yeah, that's what worked. What if fifty people get back to you? Like, and then how do I shoot fifty people? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But like, that's awesome because then you have you have like this. Um, yeah. Uh, what's the opposite of scarcity? Uh, abundance. Abundance. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And even just that, having mm. if you have a scarcity mindset, yeah, you will see scarcity. Yeah, like, yeah. And that's all there will be. Yeah. If you have abundance mindset, you'll see abundance. Like there's yep. opportunity everywhere, especially with social media. For sure. So yeah, it's having like that abundance mindset and then just asking, yep. asking. Like I get told no all the time. Yeah. Don't take it personally. Yeah. yeah. Just don't. There's no. I want to do it. That, that's and that's got. fine, yeah. yeah. Not everyone will, but the people who do, uh, mm. that'll bring you some value, I guess. Mm. Um, I was just thinking you're touching on, I guess, your um, background in the army. What do you think you took out of that time that helps you now? Mm. Army definitely cha- shaped me as a person in so many ways, but say for photography, I think... Just work. Hmm. Like the had some of the shit. When I say shit as times, I don't mean as in like uh, emotional. Well, I did have had emotionally shit times, but like as far as you know, it's two in the morning, it's raining, and you're walking through the bush. Yeah, fifty kilos on your back. That's a shit time. Yeah, and you haven't slept. So anything that's not that, you know, you can do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it feel makes you feel immortal to normal life. Yeah, and then. Or it's pretty like photography, like, you know, my hardest day is 12 hours of editing, but you're in an air conditioned room. And, yeah. and for my, in my case, oh, like I say, a 12 hour day of shooting yeah. and editing, like, the day starts, you're hanging out with hot chicks, taking photos yeah, yeah. in an air conditioned place or on location, you know. Yeah. And then you might be editing for the next 10 hours, hmm. but you have coffee, you have food, yeah. you know, it's a nice air conditioned All place. The comforts, if yeah. I want to stop, I can stop and go on exercise or whatever like yeah and so that's probably something that you know nothing that i do now will probably ever be as hard physically mm. it's just the mental thing and then, then like the army definitely built that mental strength as well to yeah just just go that must help with productivity too mm. ha- having that knowledge that you're on top of it i guess i think so yeah like just yeah just don't stop just go keep going until you, and i think i can't remember where i read the quote but it was like when you've hit what you think your limit is, you're only at 80%. Hmm. So like, you know, you just, for whatever that is, whether it's a, you're exercising or you're working or whatever, you're like, oh, I'm, I'm wrecked. I can't do I just can't go any further. That's 80%. Yeah, yeah. 20% is a lot yeah. to keep going. And, then that, and that's where you make the most growth. <laughs> By me, is that I've just done 20% more than I thought I could. Hmm. So that's, that's the new bar. You just yeah. raised it. Okay, so next time when I hit it, yep. again, again, yep. you know, and then that's when you you get really productive, you yeah, really, yep. and really creative in our cases, I think. Yeah, 
you know, it's in doing stuff that you don't think you could produce an image like that or produce a feeling like that. And yeah. Luke, where yes. can we find you? So I'm on Instagram and Facebook by, at Luke, L-U-K-E dot Sartor, S-A-R-T-O-R. And on my website, which is LukeSartor.com. No worries. And if you've enjoyed this episode, feel free to subscribe on YouTube, Talking Point Podcast. And you can also listen on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and a bunch of other places. Thanks for having me, man. Thank you.